This lecture is about the Fourier transform, but concentrating on two-dimensional discrete transforms. Okay, let's look at two dimensions now, Fourier transforms in two dimensions. Um, the continuous version, basically we just integrate over x and y instead of just x, otherwise it's uh, identical. Then in discrete version, we use the, the summation instead of the integrals. So here now we have two frequency components, u and v. So we can think of this as a vector has both spatial frequency and direction. And again, um, the point at u equals 0, v equals 0 is just the sum of all the values. The Fourier transform is a linear operation if you just um, look at what you would get if you multiply the inputs by a constant and added them. Uh, you simply get back the transforms multiplied by that constant and added. So it's a, a linear operation. Let's look at an example using MATLAB. So MATLAB has a two-dimensional Fourier transform function called FFT2 and the inverse version IFF2. So I'll go ahead and read in um, this image um, so this image here um, we're going to want to work with uh, type double so I'm going to convert this to type double instead of integer um, then Fourier transform which is FFT2 and I'll put that into a value called F. So as you can see um, the original image is real. The output transform is of type complex. Both of the same two-dimensional size though. So um, we can't um, show a complex image. We have to convert it to real. So um, MATLAB has a function called ABS, taking the absolute value. So if I do that, I get a, almost a blank image. And the reason is that, uh, a couple reasons. Um, the first reason is that the DC component is so much larger than all the other values that it kind of swamps them out. The DC value is actually up here in the upper um, left corner. If I just zoom in on that, you can see it sitting right there. Um, so two things. We want to um, move that to the middle of the image, and we want to enhance the low values just for visualization um, by taking a log function. So I'll do this again, but I'll show First, I'll, I'll shift it to the middle using FFT shift. So that just moves everything to the middle. Um, and then I'll take uh, the absolute value and then the log of that. So that enhances the low values. So now we can see the DC, that high value, is directly in the middle of this transform. Um, and then the value then the, we can also see some um, values outside the middle here. So again, the middle represents zero frequency. As we move outward from the middle, we move to higher and higher frequencies. Here's an example of another image um, and its transform. So a couple of things to note on these things. Um, one is that if you have a sharp um, edge in the image, like the edges of this thing here, those lead to high spatial frequencies. So this edge, for example, uh, produces all of this, all of these values in this direction and this direction. And the reason is that, you know, if you think back to the Fourier series of sines and cosines, um, to represent a, um, a sharp transition like a sawtooth or a step edge, takes a lot of high frequency sines and cosines. So that's that's what these are up here. Similarly, like uh, these edges, 
would represent these would yield high frequency sines and cosines um, along this this dimension here. Just some other examples. Um, here is a set of textures that have been used quite widely for um, image processing experiments. I have a couple of them loaded as you've seen here. So let me load in um, let's see how about that one. Okay, that's this one here. Um, I'll do the same operations I did before, namely convert it to double, take the Fourier transform of that, and then display uh, the transform. So you can see a very periodic pattern that represents the periodicity of this uh, spatial image horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Um, and the other the other functions, uh, you know, this this guy here would produce. Um, high spatial frequencies uh, horizontally and vertically, but not diagonally. Um, some properties of the discrete Fourier transform. One is, um, as we kind of seen already, that the spectra look very uh, symmetrical. And that comes from the fact that uh, a real function, f of xy, yields a transform that is symmetrical. The complex conjugate um, is symmetrical. So this is the complex conjugate of f at uv. That's equal to f at minus u minus v. So of course, when you take the absolute value, they're equal. And this is the proof of that. This shows a complete table of these symmetry properties. Uh, the one we just looked at was right here. Let's look at some other properties of the Fourier transform, such as the translation property. So let's say we have a function f of x, y, and its transform f of u, v. Now if we shift f of x, y by x0 and y0, that um, the effect on the Fourier transform is multiplying each value of u, v by an exponential like this. Or if we shift the um, transform by u0 v0 that multiplies the original function by these exponentials. And you can show that by substituting these um, into the equations for the discrete Fourier transform. Similarly for the continuous case. So for example um, what we showed a little bit ago was uh, shifting the Fourier transform of the image so that the zero frequency is at the center. So what we did was shift by um, a factor of m over 2 in the u dimension and n over 2 in the other dimension. So this new Fourier transform um, actually has a Fourier pair of f of x, y where each point is multiplied by this power of minus 1 to the x plus y. To see that um, we can use the translation property. Um, this case we'll use we'll use um, this one, namely shifting the Fourier transform and seeing what effect that has. So let's let uh, u zero, the amount we shift by, be m over two, and v zero be n over two. So the Fourier pair of f of u minus u0, v minus v0, um, according to the translation property, is f of x, y, e to the j, 2 pi, m over 2, um, times um, x over m and then plus n over 2 y over n. So the 
m's and n's cancel out and we get e to the j 2 pi x over 2 plus y over 2 or f of x y e to the j pi x plus y and now we're going to use uh, well first let me write f of x y e to the j pi and that whole quantity raised to the x plus y so we use the Euler Euler's formula that e to the j pi is cosine of pi um, minus j sine or plus j sine of pi so that's just a minus one so it's minus one to the x plus y